Hi, Parfalvi here, and today what I'm here to do is to explain is the frequently asked questions about going on an expedition. Today we're going to be talking about Kilimanjaro, and we're going to start from at home. I just want to ensure that when you're going to the airport, this is very important that everybody is three hours, you know, before the departure of their flight. This is very important because of nowadays security is fairly lengthy. So three hours before you go, please be at the airport and you will either be met there by one of my representatives or if not, you know, you can just check straight through. For anybody that is going on their own flights coming in from different parts of the world, please let us know when your arrival is at your international airport, you know, in Tanzania. When we arrive at the different airports, the transfer airports, please ensure that you check your time. We have seen on occasions where people have fallen asleep and they didn't check their time and they missed their plane. So please check the time and please ensure that you check your departure gate and be inside security in plenty of time because in Africa it's like organized chaos when it comes to getting through security. So please be on time. When we arrive at the airport, Kilimanjaro International Airport, um, you know, you will have to uh, pass through customs. It's either that you will have your visa or you will have to get a visa. You can do either or. New regulations from August 2019 means that we can get them online. So you can fill it on online. Please talk to John, myself or Abina in the office and we can go through that with you. If not, when you get to the airport, uh, there is usually a delay in getting visas between one hour and two hours. Uh, the cost usually is between $50 and 50 euros, but of course, you know, being in Africa, they can just change that at any stage. So please be ready, but you will be informed before you go, you know, of what price that visa is. One of the most important aspects of traveling when you're going on expedition is to ensure that you have two days trekking gear packed in your day bag to put on the plane and that's mainly in the event of your bags being lost or displaced nowadays it is very rarely for them to go missing completely so you will have to have them follow up the mountain to you but if we have one or two days of trekking gear uh, in our day bags then it will work uh, then we leave the airport after we collect our bags. You will be met by one of my representatives or you will, you know, get a taxi directly to the hotel uh, where we will have a briefing. My team or I will uh, be briefing you that day in relation to, uh, you know, what's going to happen for the rest. And every morning and every evening we will have a briefing and a debriefing to ensure that your health issues are in order. Now, some people they ask about currency. What's the best currency to bring? Well, now that Euro is a hard currency, I'd suggest that you bring a hard currency of Euro so that you don't have to transfer the dollar, you know, back into Euros and out again. Uh, over the years, um, my suggestion, and this is only a suggestion, that you carry 500 Euro in cash. And that is mainly for tips, uh, for stuff that you may need and some presents. That is for your 11 day trek on to the mountain of Kilimanjaro. Uh, when we arrive, we will usually go to a currency office. I would suggest that what you would do is transfer 100 of your hard currency into local currency. Why? You may ask. It is mainly because of the fact that it is easier to transact in hard currency or in the local currency to purchase stuff like drink, coke, uh, presents, because other than that, you're going to get completely flustered uh, in relation to the currency transactions. So, you know, as I say, cash between 60 and 100 euros and keep that in local currency. You can always uh, exchange it on the way out again. In relation to the balance of the money, the question that we're often asked is how much tips. My suggestion is, and this is the average what Irish people do over the period of time, they allow between 150 and 200 euros in tips for their porters and guides and cooks and the people on the mountain. Uh, 
If you look on the mountain, each one of you will have two to three porters carrying your gear. You'll also have a guide and you'll also have cooks and toilet boys and things like that to do the stuff for you. So please, if it's an average, and, and remember tips are discretionary. You don't have to give anything, but I know most of you are going to ask that question. Um, the tips bring that money onto the mountain with you because you are going to have to on your way down after the final summit attempt on your way down the porters and the guides will leave you at the gate so the day that you summit please gather the tips together appoint one of uh, your team members to gather them together and then to give them to the head guide or the head porter not the likes of any of the western guides but there be a Siddhar, that means a headman, the likes of Freddy or Abel or Thaddeus on the mountain. So you can give them to them the night after or the day after you actually summit the, the mountain itself. Now, a big question that all is always asked is about food. Now, since 1995, we have been climbing on Kilimanjaro. And as Napoleon once said, is an army moves on its stomach. You are like an engine and it's very important that you eat. And we pay special attention to the fact of what you're going to eat. It's mainly a um, stable diet. That's like rice, pasta, potatoes, chips. Uh, in relation to the stable part of it, vegetables and fruit. Uh, we will be, you will have meat like uh, lamb, chicken and uh, you can also have fish so it's very very uh, it's a great variety there uh, just give you an example in the morning when you get up and um, you will have uh, an omelette you know a slice of an omelette you can have a frankfurter like a sausage and um, there is also a toast most morning or crepes that you will be able to use uh, for drinks we have tea coffee uh, hot chocolate uh, in the main uh, for you to drink and it's very important to drink lots of stuff if it's a case you can there's honey and butter you know as well there for you on top of Nutella so that's basically the morning breakfast and especially for the morning breakfast they say in mountaineering no porridge no summit so if it's a case that you like porridge then there's you know uh, it's a wheat based porridge like from the legs of Ireland, so you will well be able to eat that. For lunch, we will either stop or you will get a lunch pack, and usually that forms of potato or pasta, tea, coffee, or soup, and the soups are absolutely fantastic. For dinner, you will also have all of the same types of drinks, and you will have rice, pasta, uh, chips, or potatoes on the whole for the stable part of that diet. So the food should not be a problem, but if you're a vegetarian or if you have any other allergies in relation to flu, please let us know and we will actually cater for that. But the most important thing is to eat. And if it's a case there's any problem on the mountain in relation to what you're eating, please specify you know, what you want to eat and we will try to ensure that you will get that. Then we another major question that's asked is about health health yes and uh, people are asking about dimox about things that can go wrong all of our treks are based on the importance of proper acclimatization proper acclimatization meaning drink enough drink three to four liters of water a day you know that's very very important the other thing is in relation to place go pole pole slowly slow that is one of the greatest um you know, assets in relation to acclimatizing properly. Drink and go slowly, slow. Go at your pace. I have a rule myself that I don't go faster than I can talk. And I do try to keep my heart rate, you know, under 135. There's no use in pushing yourself and your heart rate above that because it will affect you at a later stage. So it's pole pole. And all my guides and all my leaders are trained in this. But specifically, do not try to outrun anybody. Keep to your pace. Diamox. And I know some people are thinking of Diamox now. Now, I can talk for myself in relation to that. I don't use it as a prophylactic. Yes, I have used Diamox. 
and it is a diuretic so you have to drink more and you'll pee more but the most important thing is to ensure this is a holiday as well if something you know is starting to go wrong with you please you know just take the diamox it's not going to mask anything else uh, before you go you probably have talked to your doctor every one of you will be fit enough or you'll have that fitness level and if you haven't we also have a fitness program that you can contact us myself john or Rabina, on that we will go through with you to ensure that your trip you know is um uh, that you're as fit as possible as you can be for it. So we have Dymox, we usually take a half in the morning and a half in the afternoon if it's a case that it's bad. It'll actually relieve the pain on the back of your head and usually an altitude sickness come from the back of your head and it pushes on your eyes. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a standard headache and not a standard headache. But you, you can take your standard medication, it doesn't mask the altitude, that's if it's paracetamol, uh, codeine or any of those but again this will be in your specific um, first aid kit in relation to what you have been told by your doctor. There is two other things that can happen in relation to our body when we're at altitude. Sometimes we can get nauseated and this can be caused from a number of reasons so please you know you know bring uh, a medication that actually deals with nausea now we will have a certain supply ourselves but we prefer you to have your own supply in relation to what your doctor or what you, you would usually take so there's nausea and diarrhea so there's uh, a lot of the ones like isomodium and motilium or eret or one of those standard type of products that you will have now as i'm thinking of that lots of people will be moving on to uh, another expedition afterwards whether it's safari or zanzibar and you may be taking a malaria type tablet the likes of malarone uh, now for myself when i go to the mountain i don't take it because of the fact it's usually too high for mosquitoes to go but if i'm going on i do ha i do take malarone but if i get nauseated or anything like that i will actually think about going off it for a period of time if i'm taking diamox and paracetamol or amodium and motilium uh, in relation to that now main on the main i take nothing but i have had to on occasion all of this is to ensure that you don't get anxiety. Our tricks are based on the fact of best practice at altitude. The main thing to do in relation to this is go pole pole, slowly slow, you know, up the mountain. And to give yourself a chance for that final day, which is a long day by the way, to get to the summit and back down to the lower camps. Um, now I think I've dealt with everything in relation to the airport, the visas, the money, the tips, the food, the health. Um, and I just try to think, yeah, one other question you will ask is about the tent. Usually the tents are comfortable two person mountain tents. Uh, you usually have a, a two inch thick foam mat. If you wish, you can bring, you know, a term arrest or another, you know, a little mat yourself if you wish, if you have a bad back. The other thing then is that we're back at the hotel and people might ask about electronics and charging. Usually at the hotel they will have like bring an international plug set if it's a case that you wish uh, to ensure that there's all the types. But most of the hotels we have will use three pin plugs but that cannot all the time be guaranteed so please bring an international plug set with you in the event that there's two pins or you know the three of the round pins or the square pins uh, that you can charge your equipment. In relation to batteries, uh, usually, you know, there is no charging on the mountain. So please bring battery packs, you know, that can charge up your stuff. Um, they can be bought in most airports or at your um, camera shops. That will actually ensure that you can actually charge those batteries. If you have any problem, just uh, ring the office, you know, and John, I, or Abina will be able to give you the information on it. Um, if there is anything else that I've missed because this is just very fastly compiled for you at the moment that it will answer most of your questions and yet it might raise other questions. So for now, airport, visas, money, tips, foods, uh, health and electronics are dealt in brief on this particular video 
and I just want to wish you the best. But also, please, any questions, have no hesitation in contacting us here at the, at the office, either on plus 353-6466-44181 or email us at the standard address that you have. It's Pat Alvey over and out with some of the most popular questions that are asked about going on expedition. Thank you.